Hello everyone, this is Will. This is Alex. Welcome back to another episode of They Mostly Come Out at Night. Mostly! Oh boy, I I am so ready for this episode. It is going to be great. It is that time. Uh, We're doing a recommendation. Because it's the fifth. Um, It's the fifth in the series, well, every fifth. Every fifth episode. Episode, we do a recommendation or a suggestion. Um... So thank you for whoever uh, you know suggested this. Um, before we get into the episode, um, please go to your social medias, your anywhere you get your podcast podcasts, your podcast go to podcast zones, your web zones, uh, web zones. YouTube is our biggest one. Your tubes. Um, YouTube uh, search. They mostly come out at night. Podcast. Look for a red logo with two beer uh, signs. Or if you happen to come across this in this moment and you're listening to us right now, you know, if you subscribe or whatever it is, I we we love you. Yeah, no, really, like any way you support the podcast, we really appreciate it. Yeah, if you share I would, um, it, even if you're just listening to the episode, whatever. Like, I would buy sure, all of you I... a cinnamon roll, even if you don't like cinnamon rolls. I don't care. Yes. You all get a cinnamon roll. Or, I don't know, get a raspberry roll, whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> no, we really appreciate everyone who listens and, uh, you know, supports the channel and sends us recommendations like this one. Yes. Um, because, you know, we we love this podcast and we hope you guys do too. So, thank you again. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, share, what, do all your stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that over with, is there any more housekeeping? No. Okay. That's it. So we're getting into recommendation. We're going all the way back to 1974 here with Truck Turner. Now, when this when Mac this showed up, Truck <laughs> Turner. When this showed up as a recommendation, I uh, I really my heart fluttered um, because I have seen this movie before. I always say that this is I don't even know, man. It might be my. It might be my number two black exploitation movie of all time. My number one is a movie called Across 110th Street. But this is probably number two. So when this showed up, I was like, oh boy. Any excuse to watch this? I'll take it. This movie is really good. Like, I had never seen it before this. Um, like It's kind of weird because it's not that well-known because there's there there are those black exploitation movies that are known, like Shaft and Superfly, where even people who don't watch these movies have heard of well, them. Well, like, I mean, I would argue even like Dolomite. Or you Dolomite. Know, like Dolomite, like a lot of people know, yeah. and it's actually lower rated than this movie. Yes, and like, but then there's this, which isn't that well known, but those who do know, know. <laughs> And we have done Dolomite, and I think we both loved that movie, too. At least I did. We did love that movie. I, I mean, Dolomite I mean, is maybe a total for, meme. Maybe for, the, maybe for not the same reasons, obviously, but um, this is, like, super competently made. Like, yeah, the thing about this shit. is, like, it's not just that. It's interestingly made. Well, like, there's, it, there's some very unique... Where, filmmaking here where dolomite was like you know a hope and a prayer and a dream to like be famous and like they just went for it they just went for it they, this... they, they, they had this dude they filmed action scenes where no one could fight <laughs> yeah literally it's just like a hope a dream a prayer and like some friends getting together and just filming a fucking movie. that's literally what happened <laughs> this this on the other hand is studio produced there's a lot of like like really talented people working on it um big actors uh, even for the time yeah there's i mean um, there's great actors in this yeah it's so well like, filmed so that there's the difference right i mean hell i noticed in the opening credits because you know they're they're rolling and it says edited by michael Kahn, and i'm like i'm pretty sure that's steven spielberg's go-to editor for all of his movies and, and it is so yeah like, again you know, like jurassic park schindler's list saving private ryan yeah it's the same guy it's the same guy. Can you imagine working on like Schindler's List and Truck Turner? Yeah, multi talented. <laughs> like it's crazy, but I see it. And I see the talent. And like, you know, I know he has a kind of peppered <laughs> reputation, 
But I love Isaac Hayes. I think he's a very it's even funnier because I think this is the only black exploitation movie he starred in. I'm pretty sure it is. is. I mean, he did a lot of soundtracks for won like, an Oscar for it. Yeah, he won an Oscar for Shaft. Yeah, um, but I I do like Isaac Hayes, um, even especially in the '70s. I think he was a really good, like, talented musician and oh yeah, a, a really good actor. And he does a soundtrack for this movie too. Um, and he's just really good in this. He shines. He's like, it. I love how like it's. <laughs> It, this movie's only serious when it needs to be. Other than that, it's like it, it's not like hee haw. Like so, don't like get me wrong. But it it's like it right doesn't tone. it doesn't take itself like too seriously. It's very like comical about things, but like in the right way. Yeah, it's it's over the top, but not so much that it's a it's a parody. Right, it doesn't spoof. spoof itself. It's literally like it's a good movie. It's just about. It, I mean, literally, it's just about two uh, uh, trace runners. Yep. That um, just hunt down like bounties that have that Skip have jumped the their that have jumped their bond, mm-hmm. um, and they just hunt them down, take uh, bring them back in, and then they get paid. That's, it's as simple as yep. that. Now, you know it obviously evolves from that because they go after like a big head honcho guy, Gator, a pimp, uh, a big a big <laughs> pimp. <laughs> and then, you know, there's like a rivalry between the pimps. So now they're all going after the because like they wanted to get Gator and, you know. And then, yeah. Well, I know the whole pimp community is upset that that these two trace runners killed specifically the, the, the pimp. Truck Turner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But Truck Turner also has a reputation of being like a bad motherfucker. Don't fuck with him. Yeah, he's yeah. like he's fucking like dangerous. Because there's multiple times when people are like. You didn't tell me we were going after Truck Turner, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. This one's gonna be all over the place because I mean, it's like you know, I, I don't know if we need to go in depth on like you know jump around, but like we're just gonna talk about it. Yeah. Um, what do you love most about this movie? Like I said, I I, I like the I like the fact that like. It's just fun. It's just like a like a really fun, mm-hmm. enjoyable movie. Just like the whole way through, you don't think about anything. You're just, and it, you're just having a good time. It never stops. I think that's my favorite part about it. Is like it doesn't stop. It's literally like really well made, and it's just fun. There's no boring. It's just so. Scenes. It's just so fun because it's like comical in the first half. And then it gets kind of serious because they kill his partner. I mean, and like you, they kill his partner. They like they, they kill his like, cat. They fucking violently like assault his boss. So yeah, you they know, kill his cat. Like, and then like of course it turns into like a vengeance revenge movie, and that's even funner because it's just him just mowing down fucking pimps. Now, one of my favorite scenes is the pimp funeral. Oh my god! The... This exemplifies how fun this movie. It's funny is. if you. Just... I think if you look this up, this movie up, the Pim funeral is on YouTube and it has like upwards of hundreds of thousands of views because people. Because it's incredible. Who know? Absolutely no. This scene is so glorious, and it's just. It's just a bunch of pimps paying their respects and instead of like you know <laughs> roses on the grave or whatever they sprinkle cocaine on his hand and all the pimps and all their prostitutes are there i know yeah you get all, the, has all like the a... fucking prostitutes are like surrounding his fucking coffin and then all these pimps are walking up and sp- like like ashing cocaine onto his hand it's incredible it's incredible it's like just scenes like that that just like it's just so fun. Like and mm-hmm. it it's not like it almost almost it's very like tap dancing on the line of like spoof, but it doesn't go there. No, because which which I like. Well, the thing is that all And the, I'm saying that that's a good thing. All the actors are taking it seriously. Yes. And they they're not playing it as a joke. Which is which is what makes this work so. But well. it like it threads that line right because it, it like if because a if anyone el- if anyone else made it made that scene yeah it could have gone into spoof territory yeah if anyone but else does, but it does not made that funeral scene they would have pushed it into fucking hee haw nonsense and it would have like ruined it 
But it's kind of like lightning in a bottle. It's like, it's like such a good mm-hmm. like black exploitation. Like, oh god, it's so good. I don't know. What's your favorite part about this movie? I mean, along with the fact that it's, it's just, it's delightful. Mm-hmm. It's like immediately from the first scene where of dialogue, it is delightful. Well, I love the banter between the mm-hmm. two friends. The two too. friends. I um, love. I love. I fucking love the insults and the threats in this movie. It's a pr- like. Not saying that like all black exploitation movies are not well written, but like it's like the comebacks and like the the lines are so well written and so like well delivered that it's so I don't know I lo- I love it I I think it's so good um, because it's like they understood how people in this like world of Truck Turner would talk. And that's the thing is everyone and it's in this very, world like, is it feels, colorful. It feels organic, right? Yeah. It feels very organic and like this world feels well lived in. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's and just... there's lots of like, you know, where people talk and, you know, they have like comebacks to each other. They'll just like r- lightly roast each other. It, it feels natural. Well, because I mean, from the very beginning where they're chasing down their first um, like jumping balesmen mm. um you know they track him down crash into a bunch of fucking like <laughs> like it's just like chaos um, while they're driving the guy's wife's car well and they also like you know they they track him down they catch him everything's fine and then they track down gator and the same thing happens like it, it's just like fucking like chaos just yeah, they, the gator is the actual chaos they, they like find a fucking guy th- make him go into a phone booth and call gator and, and gator just, it just goes. Like Gator immediately just... knows what's up, so they kick him. They kick the guy out of the fucking phone booth. What about me? What about what me? About what you? about you? <laughs> just like, just kick him out of the fucking phone booth. They have a shootout. They shoot Gator, and then like the fucking his his. They even build it up because they mention that he has like a favorite like hoe, like a blonde hoe, a blonde hoe with big tits, and, and of course, and of course. They kill Gator, and the blonde woman comes out of the fucking shack with, like a like, fucking slasher with these, villain. Like, big fucking shears, like a fucking horror movie. Yeah, it's like a slasher scene. <laughs> fucking stabs the guy in the shoulder, and and then Trickster just walks up and fucking smacks her unconscious. But I love it. Like, um, it really. <laughs> you can kind of get. I think this will make, like, Black Dynamite more effective now, too. Because, like, you know, I get more of the context of, like, especially, like, the, the pimp meetup. Oh, God. Where they have, the, <laughs> where they have like, the fucking... <laughs> it's, like, about the prostitutes where she's showing off. Well, yeah, she's like, you yeah. can get all this and I'll cut yeah. you in on the fucking thing okay, if you so take care fucking... of Truck Turner. Oh, my God. It's, it's Uhura from Star Trek playing which is insane it's so fucking wild i cannot believe that they convinced ohura the that, from yeah. fucking star trek who's like she did stuff for like nasa yeah like the, she, this she, nice lady she is like <laughs> fucking like i just i cannot believe they made they like well they didn't make her but i mean like someone got her yeah to play a madam the, she swears like a sailor and like and that's the thing is like it's not even like she is 100 percent giving it everything well yeah everyone does in this yeah. movie even the people who like probably are just doing this for a paycheck just for a paycheck like it's and she's giving it everything but there's a scene where she's like trying to she gets you know the pimp council together and it's, it's like basically convincing them well, she's she's really upset that Gator died because she was like in like direct mm-hmm. like her and Gator were in the business yep. together, and you know after the pimp funeral, she gets all pissed off and has the council of the pimps, and then and then she's basically telling them like you know um, if she's like showing off all her women like she brought in thirty thousand dollars well that's a love how like twenty seven thousand it's it's so fucking weird how like the pimp council is like all these like super villains basically yeah it's seriously like that (laughs) she's saying like you know they bring in all this money and if you kill truck turner i'll give you a percentage of like and only one guy like because they know it's truck turner so like only one guy is like i'm in 
Well, only one guy is outwardly like, yeah, I got it. And he tries his best. That's you that's when you get the, like, the thing where it's like, you didn't tell me it was Chuck Turner. And he like, dude starts, just, this just, dude guy just runs away. <laughs> yeah, they're disguised as like fucking construction workers. <laughs> <laughs> that's the other great thing is like it's it's so quick because you get that fucking pimp council scene and then immediately after it well it goes to the the Tr- one Tr- the, walking the home. one pimp that wants to kill him <laughs> trying to kill oh him God. and i love how like incompetent the pimps are because they never fucking hit him at all no dude truck turner is a fucking is a fucking like god tier like so like he annihilates that guy and the other like pimp that's waiting on him on the fucking stairs like of his like apartment like, the fire escape <laughs> and then smokes him smokes the guy down the fucking stairs this fucking I, but I the had best look, i had to look up the line one of the lines i mean the whole fucking thing's golden but when she was introducing her uh her family, so to speak, at the pimp council. She says, these are all prime cut bitches. Two, $238,000 worth of dynamite. Fort Knox and panties. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, one of the best lines is the uh, where he, he goes. So, um, <laughs> Truck Turner goes to... Well, so it's like kind of later in the movie where he goes to figure out who's doing all this Mm -hmm. because eventually i mean the um, blue gets in cahoots with her and like cuts him in on a bigger deal and so like he starts i'll kill him but i want more he like starts sending all these pimps after him the insurance company yeah and so he has yeah he has the insurance company which again is just fucking insane like a super villain thing yeah um but the uh what was it it was like the the pimp I mean, I'm at a pi- I'm at a pimp house full of hoes, and I'm the only one getting fucked. <laughs> and he drops his fucking like <laughs> precious statue. Or the like the truck <laughs> Turner's like a bulldog with eyes up his ass. <laughs> the lines are just so good. It's 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 absolute gold. It is such gold. Oh my god. I mean, hell, you know it's awesome. When, because the, the first fucking case that they do is they go to the fucking army base, and you know the guy at the fucking gates like giving them shit, and they just bust through it, and then they're driving away, and the guy starts shooting, and he's like, "Trucker's like, I need a new tire." It's like, "Come on, like left left rear, left left rear," and he shoots it out, and then it hard cuts to the fucking guy having to replace his tire. <laughs> Oh, okay, here it is, yeah. So Truck grabs a valuable statue of Desmond's, the guy, the white guy, the white pimp with a fucking bedazzled yep. eye patch. Yep. Easy, that thing cost me a lot of Zuzus, you dig? <laughs> and then Truck Turner says, this ain't my year. Here's a pimp patio full of whores and I'm the one getting fucked. <laughs> nah. Oh, God. Oh god damn it. I think we also so good. I think we also both appreciate cuz like, you know, one of the first introductions to Truck Turner is he's a total fucking slob, but he loves his cat and you know, being a being an animal lover, at well, just animal lover and a pet owner. Yes, it just know. adds that little extra I mean, hell, there's just there's scenes of him fucking shit talking well, his cat. Like, and if it's not enough, right? You can tell he loves his cat, right? Because mm-hmm. he's all about it. And then, at a certain point, they kill his partner. They beat up his like his, his boss. boss. And then the final straw is like he can't take it anymore. Is they like well kill his cat? Yeah, they they end up hanging his cat. But it's like literally next scene after that is like they're in like a bar and he basically is telling his. His girlfriend, like, yeah, I'm going to get him. <laughs> I just love how he also doesn't want her to get, oh like, so <laughs> to, to get into, like, the shit. So, basically, he, like... Well, you just set that up because his girlfriend has an, has an issue with the law. <laughs> she, like, keeps going back into prison. Yeah, because the first time they you see them together, 
is he's meeting her in jail. Yes. And, you know, he, he kisses her. He's, she's going to be out tomorrow. And she has, like, 30 days. Well, so she had 30 days. Yeah, um, for, like... And so she she gets out, and they're like everything's good, and then, good and then that happens. and then of course when everything happens, um, he has to figure out a way to keep her safe. Cause she's like, because he's like, I don't want you involved, and she says, because he says they're gonna try well, to because she me basically you. says, I'm not going to leave you. Yeah, like and he doesn't want there's her no harmed. Way. Yeah. yeah, so he sets up this ruse where they go into a fucking store. <laughs> he has her trying a bunch of dresses, and then like as she's dressing he literally gives her like like 30 fucking dresses he like fucking like robs the store and puts it all on her (laughs) bag he steals a bunch of like expensive perfume (laughs) and then gives it back to her rips the tag off the dress and tells her to walk out the fucking store because he says he's gonna pay for everything and then she gets arrested yeah he because while while she's like going he's like oh no while she's in the room he's like he's like goes up to like the cashier he's like where's the security guard (laughs) <laughs> he basically tells the security guard, like, yeah, go, go. <laughs> and then, then you so, know. Well, and then I love, we should talk, I, we'll do this chronologically, the, the big final, like, showdown. Because mm-hmm. I think this is obviously what you came to see, right? Like, everything else yeah. leading up to this was very highly entertaining and very fun to watch. But this is the real shit. Like, mm-hmm. this is, like... It's amped up. It's like built up to this. This is like Truck Turner fucking cleaning house. Yep. Um, this is <laughs> it's so good. Because after he goes to the uh-huh. bedazzled eye patch guy that's like not involved at all. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't die, obviously. Yeah. Um, he goes to the glass house. Of the fucking insurance company. <laughs> yeah. Assassins. So the insurance company is like. You collect on your insurance, and basically, like, they collect on your insurance by killing you. By killing whoever he yeah. tells them to. Yeah. So he's going to collect their insurance policies. Mm-hmm. Well, because he's <laughs> after he kills all of them, he goes back to his boss and is like, don't worry, I canceled your health <laughs> your insurance. Your insurance with the... <laughs> yeah, he goes to this glass house and you know annihilates these fucking idiots well i just love shotgun. how he like, he like sneaks around so there there's like and i love all these characters because they're lived in right so oh, one yeah. of them's called the candy man and you don't know why yeah but they even have a conversation where they're like they call you the cam candy man and he's like some do some do and like it, like no explanation of why he's called the candy man but like again it's just lived in yeah there's like one like chubby uncle and you know when he shows up his thing is like can we get on with this? I got to I got to go to like the double header. Like he's he's just in town. He's actually there to just watch like a boxing match or something. Right. Just little little details just like that. Flavor. That's what you want. A little like seasoning. You want you want well seasoned yeah. meat. I want these characters to feel unique, not just like fucking drones. <laughs> Yeah, not just mindless goons that come out of nowhere. I mean, sure, that, like, has its place in some movies, mm-hmm. and it's fine. Like, when you have, like, a whole headquarters full of people, you're not going to go through and explain every single fucking character. No, you don't need to. But the insurance company is three dudes. Just three guys. So it's like, of course they're going to fucking, like, explain, at least give them a little bit of depth. And with this movie, almost every character has some sort of like, All the pimps have, like, depth, like, depth. All the characters, like, on the other side have depth. Mm-hmm. Everyone has a story, and that's Everyone what I like feels, about it. Yeah, yeah, feels lived in. The whole movie feels lived in. Exactly. Um, and so he, like, annihilates all of them. He shoots one guy off the fucking, like, uh, off the and roof. Slow-mo falls into a pool, and then he and shoots, shoots him, him more again. times. <laughs> um, and then I love when he goes back to the hospital, because he tells, he canceled the... And he gives him a gun, and he's like, "You might need, you might this. need this." And then immediately, uh, immediately like, like you not even like not it, like same scene. It same doesn't scene even is. cut. No, it's literally the same scene, same everything. Fucking blue comes into the hospital, and they start fucking having a giant shootout in it. Well, he comes to the hospital and like you know, sticks his gun at Truck Turner, and then his fucking boss, of course, shoots. And I just then, like how, how also um, Blue has like a chubby white guy like just randomly with his entourage, yeah, to like do white guy shit, yeah, to like warn him of like because he cause, like he like imitates the doctor, yeah, because when he walks him. into the fucking hospital, um, truck turner like the guy immediately goes to a phone and like 
call somebody and you know Mm -hmm. what he's doing (laughs) <laughs> they have a shootout and like all these like innocent people get fucking annihilated well, in the crossfire there's, and they like, didn't have there's guys that. in wheelchairs getting knocked over well, like every injured person in the entire hospital like somehow gets injured more yes because there's like a guy in crutches that gets knocked over they tip over every fucking wheelchair there's a guy in a find. gurney who gets also tipped over <laughs> like if you were injured in this scene already like if your character was injured in this scene prepare to be more injured you're gonna feel even worse <laughs> Well, and, like, a bunch of innocent people get shot, too. Like, Yeah, he grabs, like, a kid as a well, hostage. I, I mean, honestly, like, again, as, like, a well-lived-in world, you know, some of these movies where it's, like, they're scared to, like, mm. kill the innocent bystanders. So, you know, no one gets shot. But, they, like, in this scene, like, everyone fucking, like... Well, plus... Everyone's in danger. You see, it's the it's the bad guy who's shooting them and not right like not truck turner is not like annihilating so like, fucking innocent you know, people you know what they're doing so yeah like truck uh goes he, he like runs and beats the elevator yeah, he could, the guy harvard blue he takes the elevator down and he shoots the fu- his leg and then he's like trying to run out of the building and like you get that iconic yeah you see it like three i times. mean three times yeah like where they like have the pov of it's truck. like a I don't know what it's the like fuck a you fish call island, it. Almost? Or like a deep focus where it's like his gun is really prominent in the frame. But like he's kind of like Well, they they made his gun look fucking massive. Yeah. Like it looks like a goddamn hand cannon. Yeah. And it's just, you know, he like lines it up, points and shoots and hits him in the back. They didn't have to go this hard for like Blue's death, but they no, really did. No, it's such a fucking It's such a unique well, because like they way to do this, they mount a for camera. A fucking 70s they movie? mount a camera to the guy's shoulders. Yeah, it's like, and it's like an extreme close up of his him dying. It's like if you've ever seen Requiem for a Dream, like they have those scenes in that movie where people are like in like a stress situation and they like mount a camera to their head, but it's like perfectly focused on their head. Yeah, it's like that kind of effect, and they do it for his entire death. Right, because he's like struggling to get into his car and then he finally gets into his car and his blood starts spewing out of his mouth and he just leans forward and dies dies incredible and then of course he goes back to the fucking um is it this dorinda dorinda yeah the uh the the person that set this all up madam yeah and so she's uh (laughs) he's like Instead of like killing her, he's like, "Get the fuck out of town! Get the fuck he's out of going here!" Going through her closet, he's just like just throwing everything at her. Just fucking get the fuck out of here! I don't want to fucking see your face again. And she starts like opening like her drawer, and she's like, "Don't even reach for that piece, or you're gonna be what?" Does he? <laughs> Another classic line where you're gonna be like, "You're gonna be the ace," like, like something about air conditioning. Yeah, like you're. <laughs> oh, and man. of course, you know she pulls it on him. No, she says, like, you wouldn't kill a woman. And no hesitation. He just turns around and blasts her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah, I mean, there's I think so it's also many... worth mentioning another fantastic uh, edit in the movie where, you know, they get that first guy at the army base. And, you know, they have him in the car. And he just is spouting off all these like racial slurs against them yes and then you know truck turner comes up to him like grabs him and is like shut the fuck up and he tells him like yeah you're really tough with these handcuffs on me and literally it immediately cuts to them beating the fuck out of him yes he doesn't have his handcuffs on (laughs) that's a love um you may have already mentioned this but when they get to like the army base yeah it's the guy that's like treating them like shit yeah, they just blast through and well, they blast through and like, I love how this is like one of the banter scenes mm-hmm. where they're talking and he's like, he's like, I need a new tire. He's like, come <laughs> on, take out the front, the like the left, re- the left rear, the left rear, and the guy shoots the tire and then it like cuts, it to, cuts him to him having to replace replacing it. the tire and he's like, come on, why'd you do that? We could have just called it in because the whole time he's giving him shit, his partner, the army guy's partner, is like. You know, I could just call the major, and the guy's like, "Shut up! I'm not letting this fucking de- this idiot in." And then it, when it cuts back, he's like, "You know, you should have just listened to me." <laughs> <laughs> or the fucking um, God, when they're chasing Gator, 
it's like a 15 minute long chase scene like they go through the city they have a foot chase at like this water like this water treatment facility and then they have another chase through the city but there's a bit where um they run into like they go through a bar and Gator goes in the bar and there's all these guys there and he's like I'll give you f- here he just starts throwing money around here's 50 bucks beat the shit out of the two guys that come in here and of course when they come in a fucking brawl starts they just annihilate everyone it's so wonderful and then they tell them all to drop their pants and then it like cuts to a scene of them all at the bar all these white dudes at the bar with their pants down with their pants down and they're like man if it if i had known it was truck turner i would have asked for more because he's um He's like he's also established that he's a former football player. Yeah, but he had to he had to quit all that because of uh because of an injury. God, what a fucking movie! God, it's so good. Or like the when he's entering the salon to talk to um the madam. <laughs> if you want to find a rooster, you gotta check out the hens. Yeah, because when they walk in, his friends like, "Why the fuck are we in here?" <laughs> <laughs> Because that's when they're yeah looking. That's when they're looking for Gator, and they know that that she knows, because they're all on the uh, the precious precious pimp council together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just. I'm trying to find. Let's see, more quotes that are just fucking insane. Um. Uh, sorry for the dead silence, my bad. Um. Piss standing up, Will. <laughs> so you just saw a $238,000 sh- uh, $238, uh, shake its ass right in front of your face. If you can't respect Gator, then respect that. I want that bastard truck turner and I want him dead. The man who kills him gets my broads and I'll run the stable. A <laughs> uh, um, little old, uh, little old Uhura. <laughs> yeah, that's literally delivered by Uhura. Yeah. No, the one that I, I also knew because, um, because we're both fans of Rob Zombie, Rob Zombie's music. Um, he has a song called Dead Girl Superstar. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning of the song, because he loves his he loves his fucking audio clips from B movies, there's a line that says, "Get out there and make it look good." And when I saw this movie, I realized that's where it's from. There's a whole scene where she's like roasting all of the prostitutes, and at the end of that, she says, and she says like other things like, "You better learn to sell pussy in ice." <laughs> Or the uh, when Harvard Blue is talking uh, about like um, Deronda like desperately trying to get people to, to like kill truck kill Turner. Tr- truck Turner. She, he's like, Dorinda, you coming on so strong? You're gonna need an act of Congress or the United States Army to get Truck Turner <laughs> up your ass. That's the other great thing is everyone knows. Well, that's like uh, that's like another thing with like the lived in uh, universe, right? Because like everyone knows that Truck Turner is an absolute badass, and yeah. you do not fuck with him. Because it's like that's what he does. He chases down criminals, and they are part of the criminal underworld, so they know. Yeah, they know that he's like, and he's notorious for doing what it takes to like get yep. the job done, basically. Because like when they chase down Gator, it's like their whole thing is like, you know. They find out that, well, he's dangerous, so they want a lot of money, want $1,000 each to chase him down. And it's like, preferably, preferably alive. But, you know, you know that he's not going to hesitate if he has to. Well, I think they even mentioned that they're going to have to smoke the pimp Mm -hmm. because, like, he's, like, too... He won't let him. He's, like, too sneaky and too, like, he'll he'll, keep escaping them if they don't. Yep. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. This movie's it's just like it's such a good like little like hour and a half like yeah. film. It's so fun. If you like black exploitation movies, like Has, you owe it just, and yeah. you haven't seen this, like you owe it to yourself to like watch this movie. Yeah. And then after all that, it still gives you your happy ending that you wanted. She gets out cuz you know his girlfriend gets out of prison. 
and he's like apologizing to her and all this stuff and then he like it's like i got something he like has a kitten it's like another <laughs> another pisser <laughs> another pisser because i mean even in the because in the beginning, the beginning of the movie like the cat pisses on his, his shirt. shirt you pissed on my shirt my <laughs> last good shirt he's like like man you smell like <laughs> the next scene He's like, man, you fucking smell like piss. You smell like piss. He's like, I ain't no slob. He's like, he's like, no one's calling you a slob. You just smell bad, <laughs> or something like that. It's just, yeah, like, it's, it's so good for for like a B movie like this. And obviously, I mean, you know, we watched it in HD, so it, it certainly helps that it fucking looks fantastic. But it just shows that like, just because something's a B movie, it doesn't need to be lazy. Well, it doesn't need to be lazy, and it doesn't need to be boring, and it doesn't need to be, like, bottom of the barrel. Well, and I mean, I again, this is studio produced, but we've watched plenty of indie ones that are, like, mm-hmm. well done. Well, that's the other thing. Just because it's studio produced doesn't mean it's actually going to be good. Yeah, like, money does not mean it's going to be good. Yeah, because, like, a lot of studios obviously jumped on the black exploitation train. Yes. But, you know, not every movie... Because, like, listen, we, we watched our most recent one was uh, Black Gestapo, which we had fun with, but... I think for different, way different reasons. Obviously, though. you can't call that a competently made <laughs> film. No. There was uh, quite a few issues. Whereas this... Well, quite a few issues that led to, like, it being absolutely hilarious to watch. Yes, the uh you know the fact that it looked like a cheap amateur porno or that the scene in the hospital he's like tonight's the night oh and my she, fucking she, no that and she, was actually and genius. she just smiles and it literally cuts them to them having fucking, sex that was actually genius that was um oscar worthy <laughs> editing and dialogue tonight so out of nowhere well because they're why fighting. would i they're... why would i let you walk me home because tonight's the night <laughs> fucking smile cut the fuck <laughs> it's like okay all right yeah so very very different reasons why these are enjoyable because this is like really well made and has like really good um effects and acting and like you know you can tell it's on a smaller budget but it's it makes use of that budget like oh yeah a lot well plus so. I mean, for me i love the uh the real like raw and on location let's just be the, the soundtrack is so good i mean it's so it's, it's, a black it's so movie. funky and just it's just uh, it's so good I do also love well, it. Well, it's also Isaac Hayes doing the doing music. Doing the soundtrack, so like, too. Yeah. Very meta. Um, but I also love a, a little touch is like, because the last, that last shootout at the hospital, you have the music playing through all of it. But then once it does that scene of Harvard, Harvard Blue dying slowly, it just. Well, it cuts to like a, like a wind noise. Yeah, they completely cut the music. And Which is great. Like wind. And, and the, like, I don't, they don't use that like uh, camera editing in any other. Like, it's such again. It's such a weird choice, but man, it works. It's so effective, well. like because you know he's just dying, and there's no dialogue. Well, I think they wanted to emphasize how important that death was because yes. like Blue has been fucking with like Truck Turner the entire movie. He fucked with his pet. Yeah. Okay. Like you, you know. don't kill the pet. It, <laughs> it's been going on since the fucking like probably before this. Yeah, I mean, but it's like a classic thing. You do not, you do not kill the pet. You have your fucking yeah. You have your badass character, and you fuck with his pet. Listen, and I get it. Being a pet owner, I think any, I think anyone o- who yeah. owns a pet who loves like animals probably gets it. Yeah, we we are we are fans of uh, the John Wick films. John Wick is like the the most modern example we, of it. But... We totally understand. Yeah, I get it. You kill you kill my fucking dog, yeah. Listen, yeah, I, you gonna feel my wrath. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a what a delightful film. Yeah, it's just great. I mean, it's just I can't believe I hadn't seen this before. Like, and I I do like black exploitation films a lot. Like, one of my favorites is <laughs> it's kind of like a 
it, it's almost hee haw, but the uh, Blackula. Yeah, Blackula's fun. See, the sequel is fun too. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, the one we watched, the one we suffered through, was Black Frankenstein. Yes, almost just called Blackenstein. I could be fucking wrong. Yeah, I love I love Blackula. I think it's hilarious. Blackula's fun. I know it's like more of a comedy, but like kind of, sort of. I don't know, but Blackula kind of rides that line where it's like the <laughs> actors are taking it seriously. Yeah. But obviously, it's, I mean, it's Blackula. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, Listen. it's great. And it's fantastic. It's Dracula, but he's black. Mm-hmm. He's an African prince. Okay. He gets cursed by a, a Transylvanian prince. If mm. you haven't seen Blackula, please go watch it. Look, it's a Blackula. It's, almo- it's almost October, and you can, like, have an excuse for watching you know Ooh, horror movies like, every single day as yeah that should be on your rotation that and the sequel scream blackula scream yeah <laughs> i know it because i because i'm the, i'm the nerd who knows the name of the sequel off the top of my head it's fine <laughs> also if you like that go watch dracula dead and loving it for yes different reasons for very different <laughs> reasons not black exploitation but uh yeah Leslie holy Nielsen. shit no <laughs> like holy shit that is a fucking movie oh man black is great no black exploitation is because that's the thing about black exploitation is there's a lot of fun not all of those movies are actually what i would call good movies no but every now and then you have something like truck turner where it really it exceeds the genre what I don't know if you want to call it trappings, but it goes so far above it. It kind of breaks the mold, right? Because yeah. you think that all these black exploitation f- films are going to be extremely low budget, mm-hmm. very like not the best like made, right? Yeah. So it's like it's going to be very amateurish. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean. A lot of those movies like benefit from that, right? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I actually like really like it's endearing seeing mm-hmm. like amateurs do. It's still fun like, that kind of movie, like Dolomite. Like I said yeah. uh, before, that was like lightning in a bottle. Mm-hmm. Like that Dolomite was like a hope, a prayer, and a dream. That was they fucking did it. A man's and it, passion. And it projects. was it was fucking awesome. I love Dolomite, but like, but like this kind of breaks that mold where it's like competently made yeah. very well acted every bit um like every every ingredient in this is is perfect it comes together like the action scenes are well done like everything is script very well yeah. done like it's 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 a black exploitation movie that's made like a studio movie like somebody like gave yeah. a shit it's even like it's better than some fucking it's better than a lot. It's better than a lot of black exploitation films. It's better than um, a lot of studio movies. Like, I'm sorry, not every movie can have a goddamn script this great. Yeah. And not every movie can fully pull that off, like, with 100% conviction like this does. Yeah, exactly. Not every movie is going to have that pimp funeral. Yeah. No, I... Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no movie has had a, that oh my God. epic of a pimp funeral. Do you funeral. remember... I swear, like we we this sent us this sent us away is when he gets into that first the first pimp tries to kill him and they start having that shootout you see that thing of like there's like an open window and like an old guy peeks out and then a woman and then a woman peeks out and then it cuts back to the shootout and then it cuts back to the window and a black guy peeks out (laughs) It's so good. And they're all, like, naked. They're all naked, so it's implying that they're having a fucking, like, threesome. Like a threesome. (laughs) These old people. A devil's three-way. Oh, fucking good. Because it's one of those things where you see that, and you're like, oh, it's just two people, like, have who are in the middle of having sex. Okay. It cuts back, and there's a third guy. (laughs) Well, and that's, again, like, I love all the, like, just little things they add to make it yeah. just that much more entertaining that is totally unnecessary but my god well like amazing. how like the goons are like scared of truck turner is always hilarious and mm-hmm. like <laughs> everyone knows yeah all the goons know they, they do not want to fuck with them yeah it's yeah god oh uh, yeah go watch this movie if you like black exploitation movies um thank you for whoever recommended it um because i had not seen it 
Um, and I'm really glad that I have seen it now. This is why recommendations are great. And I definitely will watch it again, 100%. Um, now, I don't know where you can watch this per se. We uh, we found it through means. Um, but um, um, is it available on any streaming on. services? Um, the the podcast is, is, is buffering. Okay. <laughs> loading, loading, loading. loading. <laughs> please, please hold. We're just trying to get you this content so you can watch it for yourself. Because I know it's somewhere. I, I, I think, think you it have is. have a subscription. Maybe. What is Pluto Maybe. TV? Oh, Pluto is, I think, ad. So, according or is to... it on MGM Plus? According to the Google, it is on Pluto TV for free. And... Pluto TV does have ads, so you'll have to watch it through the ads. But I think it's worth it. I know it's on some... I wonder if it's MGM Plus because like it's an MGM Maybe. movie. I don't know if they I don't know if they added it to it or not, but you can rent it on Amazon, but it's only in standard def, which honestly I'm sorry, dude, fuck that. Also, it's six dollars. Give me a break. Um I know it's on some streaming service. It might be like AMC Plus or something. But it says it's on Pluto, and as long as it's the HD version, honestly, who I don't give a fuck about an ad. Ads don't really bother me, but I because I think it's worth it to watch the movie. Because for some reason, this movie is like not the easiest to watch. I trust me, I don't know why. It should be. I think it deserves. I think it deserves its time. Like maybe that's why it's kind of like not everyone knows about it because it's uh. You can watch it with something called screen picks. Okay, I if you have screen picks, you can watch. If you're one of if five you have people, screen picks, you can watch truck. Okay, you know what? Stranger things have happened, but it's all right. Every um, now and then, there's these movies that we have in this podcast, and you know, the question comes up: Where can you watch it? And then I look it up, and it's on like some streaming service that I've literally never heard of in my entire existence. No, but apparently they have a they have they have the rights to this movie. Sure. Okay. okay. Sure, right. Jan. Yeah. So, screen picks. Um, should we even do a shitty or pretty? You said this is like top three. Like, uh, it's. I said pretty, I straight up said this was my number it's two. It's pretty fucking obvious what the fucking rating is gonna be. It's only an eight, Will. It's like, it, it, yeah. You know, it's five for me. It's just kind of yeah. It's mid. It's kind of okay. mid. <laughs> yeah. It's alright. Well, it's, it's like a ten. We've had like all these movies lately that mm-hmm. like. Have just been like we don't even need to do. Unfortunately, our next movie is also going to be like that. We just we're just our next year. Our, our next film after this, we are ending eighty five. Well, here's the thing: we're getting spoiled. Like I just, I feel bad. Don't because, worry, well, because after we finish, um, once we get into eighty six, I'm sure we it's are gonna starting be, back I'm from sure the bottom. I'm sure it's going to be the shit. We are starting back from the bottom, baby. So don't worry, this luck is not going to continue. And I'm sure, you know... We will get back to our, like, reviews where we absolutely fucking hate the movie. We will have reviews where we absolutely, like, hate, hate our lives. (laughs) It's inevitable. I mean, it's a podcast where we're doing low-rated movies. (laughs) It's gonna happen. We've just been getting lucky. We're, like, we're a little too spoiled right now, but 86 is going to show us some shit. But, you know, we're going to start from the bottom of 86 and make our way back up. Because you got to have, you got to, you got to swim through the river of shit, okay? (laughs) You've seen Shawshank Redemption, okay? It's like the river that he swims through the shit. And he he finally gets out out into the rainstorm. And this is us right now. We are in the rainstorm. (laughs) (laughs) We are, we are getting very spoiled right now. But we will. Even with the recommendations, because you, sometimes you never know what you're walking into when you're doing a recommendation like we walked into some horrific shit yeah and we got you know look we we got our our recommendations you know like we're in the rain and sometimes like the recommendation is bad it's like stepping in like uh like some shit yeah you slip and fall back and shit back into the shit yeah we'll get there again so don't worry because i know a lot of i'm sure a lot of fans like our uh reviews where we actually just go like fucking insane because the movie's so bad but well listen our next recommendation is a uh an al adamson joint so oh fuck me i'm sure good old al he always makes those fucking ones that we just love we love al adamson i love like (laughs) 
I, I swear at this point, this podcast has like a rivalry. We have like our our arch nemesis is Al Adamson. I think I made a joke once. I don't know if I did it on the podcast or I just did it in private, but I'm beyond caring. But I think I mentioned that I love Al Adamson like you would love like, you know, a, a dog that can't shit properly. Like, you know, a three-legged dog with bowel, bowel problems. Like, that's how I love him. You just look at him and you're like, aww. I think he's become our most uh, prominent uh, director. Yeah, he's like the he's like the clap. He like he's, he keeps he, he just keeps coming keep, back. He keeps fucking crawling back. And someone recommended God damn him. Al. So of course, because his entire career <laughs> is basically on this podcast. Yeah, fits this podcast. Fuck, we're gonna keep having to watch Al Adamson. Well, he's just he's like a factory. He just he never stopped making movies. <laughs> Because some of these fucking. I think 80s... he made movies until like the what early two thousands. No, I think he stopped in the eighties. Oh, did he? Okay. Um, I mean, I, I don't know when he passed away. But what um, am I thinking of then? We have some. I mean, we have. The, there we... is a director that has made movies well into the two thousands. We like, have directors that he will keep like. On. They keep coming back. Like we've watched movies and they will continue. The repeat offending continues. Yes. Uh, yep. We we have we have a few of those. Because not everyone can do that. There's some directors, you know, they'll make a movie every five years. But Al Adamson was every year, boom, 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 boom. He just shits them out. <laughs> just Like an assembly line. Just, here you go. Just and mold the shit. They mostly come out at night. Is here to pick up the shit. We have to do it. <laughs> you know, we've we've seen his takes on everything. But on anyway. movies. <laughs> Horror. Um, oh, the heavy quotes on the horror. Or, um, what what the fuck was it? Black exploitation, martial arts, <laughs> and he fucks it up every time. <laughs> you know, you can't do it. <laughs> you think at some point he would learn how to make a movie? Uh, no. You think at some point he would understand how movies are made? He just understands how to fuck up in new ways. Like you said, it's like a three-legged dog that shits itself. It's just like, he can't help it. Like, he can't help it. You gotta he, love he, him. He's gonna shit himself. Like, you're just gonna have to deal with it. Like, you're just gonna have to pick up the pieces. You can't hate him for what he suck is. Suck it up because, you know, it's, it, it's... You have to take care of him. Yeah. You know, he's got one eye. He can't hear... You have someone has to love him, okay? And you're like, what are you gonna do? You can't pick on him for what he is. No, it's not. It's, it's rude. It's not his fault. It's not his fault. Exactly. Exactly. It's not. <laughs> it's, fault. It's, it's, it acts absolutely as Al. He's just a man fault. who loves titties. He could, have, and... he could have stopped at any point, and he did not. He had a dream. He does apparently. love titties. That's that's the one constant <laughs> through the career. He will not stop. Is it's always titties. There is gonna be titties. That's the one Absolutely. consistency you get. TNA is in every Al Adamson movie. Yeah. Like, honestly, the fact that he didn't just straight up decide to make pornos is shocking. I am shocked because a lot of our directors did. Because he wasn't just like, you know, I, I don't want to make actual movies. But Al Adamson was like, no. Actual films. I like how we're like, we've completely stopped talking about Trek Turner. And we have gone on a fucking tangent on Al Adamson now. Pain is eternal, Will. <laughs> oh, but uh, <laughs> to end the episode, <laughs> before we get back into Al Adamson, um, because we will talk about him more once we do his movie. Our next the, request. Yeah, our next request is in Al Adamson. So plenty more to come Thank from you, that. Sir. Truck Turner's 10 out of 10. Yes. So good. If you like black exploitation movies, go watch it, please. Mm -hmm. um, even if you have seen this movie before, just watch it again. It's, even if you it's, it's have incredible. never seen a black exploitation movie, watch it. It's yeah. I mean, it's it's good for any viewing. Honestly. Like, like to be honest. You want to just you want to watch a fun 70s action movie? Yeah, and please. just have a good time. Just please. Have have a good time with Truck Turner. There you go. I can't recommend it enough. It's great. Um, so that's, that's it. it. Uh, I'll fucking see you, Al Adamson, in hell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's going to be your final words. <laughs> yeah, on my deathbed, just be like... <laughs> I'll see you in hell. <laughs> Why does he keep screaming about Al Adamson? I'll see you in hell, you old dirty fuck. <laughs> I'll see you in hell, you fucking pervo. <laughs> You old dirty fuck. I swear to God, Al Adamson. I'll get you. I'm fucking coming for you. 
I'll get you. <laughs> If it's the last thing I do. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> okay. Sorry. For they mostly come out at night. This has been Will. This has been Alex. And we'll talk to you all later. Bye. <laughs> Bless, blessed be Al Adamson. You old dirty bitch. You old fucker. You fucking get us again. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>